Welcome to installing BMX with a KVM hypervisor. My name is Josh Verhall. I'm a courseware developer within the Juniper Networks Education Services Department, and I will be running through this installation with you today. In our example, installing and hosting VMX, we're using CentOS 7 as the host OS. Keep in mind that the host has already been pre-prepared with the VMX based on the VMX installation instructions where you add libraries and, and make changes to the host. KVM and Virtual Manager have also been installed on the host device. The desktop has been configured as a DHCP server uh, as well as an FTP server to allow us to auto configure the VMX devices. This is not required, but in the interest of simplifying this lab, this has been carried out. The VMX files have been downloaded from Juniper.net and extracted to the home lab directory already for you. We'll review the VMX configuration file for VMX2 that we'll use to instantiate the VMX, the virtual uh, MX device. And we'll review what needs to be defined within, within that configuration file. We'll then use the orchestration script to install and create the new VMX instance. Keep in mind that VMX1 has already been deployed on this server. Once VMX2 is installed, we will use the virtual device manager to make a few changes. Uh, we'll set the internal VMX2 bridge to auto start on boot up. Uh, we'll also set the VMX2 VMs for the VCP and VFP to auto start on boot up. And then we'll change the bridge that's associated with the GIGI 000 interface to match that bridge that's being used on VMX1. And finally, we'll use the ping utility to verify communication between the two VMX instances. This topology highlights the logical setup that we're basically using for the purpose of this lab. All right, let's move uh, to our student desktop or our host device. Uh, we'll begin by looking at the directory where, the, where we extracted the uh, VMX files. Uh, we're logged in as a lab user, so on the desktop here, we've just got a home folder which takes us to the directory. This file here is what you would download from the Juniper support site. And basically, you just do an extract here. Uh, it extracts all the files, which are then stored in a VMX folder. And this is where all of your VMX-related files are going to be, uh, your different scripts, uh, your Junos image, as well as your uh, VFPC image. Uh, and then we've got our config folder. This is where you'll find your config files and your sample config. Uh, the vmx.conf is the sample config that we use to build out the vmx1 and vmx2 configuration files. Within the file is where you basically define the parameters uh, for the orchestration script to build your VMX. Uh, we've got a VMX version here. Uh, we've also got the uh, VFPC or the, the VFP uh, image. Uh, we define bridges uh, here for the external bridge. Uh, we're going to be using the BR-EXT as our external bridge. Uh, and then we've got two different sections here. We've got the RE. Uh, then this is where you define the vCPUs and memory as well as the console port that you would use uh, to telnet to localhost to reach that uh, console port. Uh, and then you can also configure a static IP address uh, as well as the MAC address. Uh, for the RE or the VCP, uh, it really doesn't make any difference if you configure the IP or not here. It's just for illustration purposes uh, because the VCP is controlled by Junos. The next section we've got is the VP, uh, PFE, uh, which is basically your forwarding plane uh, for the VFP. Uh, we've got 
8 gig of memory and 3 vCPUs which is the minimum and we're using console port 8604 and the device type we've defined as Virto which is uh, the recommended interface type interface drivers to use for the gigabit ethernet uh, and then we've got our static interface configuration this is the address that will be uh, assigned to the management interface of the uh, VFP uh, virtual image as well as a MAC address down below here we've got all our different interface names and MAC addresses defined for those that basically covers what you you need to define for a VMX config file Next, we'll start up a terminal session and we'll start up our vert manager and see what's currently running. So we can see that we've got a VCP for VMX1 and a VFP for VMX1. Uh, over here off to the side, you'll see a nice little graph going by. That's for the uh, CPU utilization as well as the host CPU utilization. There are some other things that we can look at, but we'll uh, hold off on that until we get our VMX2 image running. Okay, so from here, we want to change directories to the VMX folder. Uh, and in here, we have the uh, vmx.sh. This is the orchestration script that you'll use to build your VMX2 device. And this script needs to be run as a root user or needs root privileges. So uh, since we're logged in as lab, lab, we'll use sudo to accomplish that. And we will add the tag or the add the option for specifying a config and then we define the path. Uh, the config folder is in config slash and then it's called VMX2 dot config. That's the one we just looked at. And then we specify that we want to install. Well, I guess I got to type the right password. Okay, so this can take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording right now and pick it up uh, once it's completed. Okay, we're back. The uh, script has completed, um, and you can see that uh, everything has been created and is running, and everything's marked as okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and log into Vert Manager again, and uh, verify that everything's everything's now working for VMX2. Uh, so we can see we've got a VCP for VMX2 as well as a VFP for VMX2. Should also notice that uh, the VCP is uh, running pretty high on the utilization. That's because the system's booting at this point. Uh, we'll close out of of this, go log into the console of VMX2. Uh, we can see that it's uh, now loading. So let's go back and look at our vert manager again while it's booting in the background uh, and go ahead and make our uh, changes uh, that we need to make for the device. So for the KVM, uh, we want to log in and change the details for the virtual network for the bridge domain. We want to make sure that it's auto start on boot. So you can see we've got two internal bridge domains. We've got the one for VMX1 and it's set to auto boot, auto start on boot. Uh, so what you do is you select the other one, our internal two, uh, and you just select the box and it changes it to on boot. So now, anytime the system reboots or boots up, uh, it will automatically start that uh, bridge domain. Uh, the next thing we want to do is go to the VCP 
and open it up and we're going to want to change the boot options uh, and ensure it starts on boot up and we'll apply that change uh, and finally we'll go to the uh, VFP for VMX2 and we'll, and we'll enable the auto start on boot up apply that change um, and then we're going to make the VLA, or the the bridge domain change for the interface Gigi 000 the first two interface or the first two virtual NICs are reserved for the external communication and the internal bridge. The third interface, or the third virtual NIC that we see on our device will begin at Gigi 000. Uh, and what we need to do is we need to change the bridge domain here to VNet1, which is the same bridge that uh, BSRX1's Gigi 000 is on. Apply that change and go ahead and close out of uh, the virtual virtual manager and we'll return to our booting device. Uh, this can take a few minutes so I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording um, and return when it has completed. Okay uh, we're back our device has finished uh, booting up with after we instantiated the VMX2 device at this point uh, in your network or in a uh, normal installation uh, the device is in running an amnesiac uh, so you would log in with the user root with no password uh, but since this this device is set up with uh, the auto configuration and DHCP uh, the student desktop or the desktop uh, device pushed out the config that's on the device so we will log in with uh, a configured user a lab and we can see that we've got a, a configuration on there so let's look real quick at the configuration Make sure it looks good before we run our verification. Okay, we can see that we've got uh, Gigi00 interface configured with the 10.10.10.2 address. The VM, uh, VMX1 device is configured with the 10.10.10.1 address. So we we'll use that uh, to verify that we can uh, established communication across the uh, Gigi 000 interfaces. Uh, let's make sure that our interfaces are up. Okay, we can see that we've got uh, an IP address assigned to Gigi 000. Uh, we also have Gigi 001 through 009 uh, up and up. And we can see that our FXP0 is up and functioning as well. So let's go ahead and attempt to ping a VMX1. Okay, great. So at this point, uh, that wraps up uh, our uh, instructions on how to initialize or how to install VMX. Thank you for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.